section. Hello and welcome back to Celtic Reptile and Amphibian. And before we get into the video, we just want to thank Riverco Garden Furniture for sponsoring us. As you can see, they've provided us with some incredible garden furniture. And I'm going to put the website up on the screen now and in the description. So go and check out their amazing range. So to kick off today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the Smooth Snake and Harvey earlier this week was actually building their enclosure, so we'll take you to that in just a second. So because it's nice weather, I thought I'd bring out this viv and I think we'll make a Smooth Snake enclosure. I'm going to plant it up and then we'll get the animal in. And it's worth mentioning Smooth Snakes are protected under the Wildlife and Countryside Act, so it's illegal to take them from the wild. Um, and it's also illegal to kill them and even disturb them. So what we uh, do is we get captive bred animals which are exempt from the legislation. And this one has come from France and it's a German locality, so it's not a British locality. As you can see, I've added soil in and I've banked it slightly upwards. I may even move this outside into the sun so the smooth snake can bask naturally. Uh, but we will have Arcadia products on here the Jungle Dawn and the T5 unit. As you can see, Belle is investigating. So we've got a range of different materials, uh, rocks, slate, and then the plants. I've got thyme, uh, not thyme, rosemary, uh, a couple of heathers, and a geranium here that I grew myself. And then of course, some leaf litter. So I'm now gonna start to plant the tank and I'm gonna use the hardscape elements first, like the rocks, this one might be a bit too big. I oh, know. Fits in there. I'm actually gonna I bank back that soil up there. That goes in. So although smooth snakes are fossorial, and that's why I provided lots of uh, soil for them, um, We've actually noticed with keeping this one in captivity, and they aren't they aren't cap, kept very often in captivity, that um, they also like to climb. And so, just because an animal maybe doesn't fit a certain ecological role, doesn't mean it'll never exploit the environment. So, we may as well give it, as you can see by this rosemary, somewhere to climb. I always say that adding leaves basically makes it look natural. I think we're done. So let's release the smooth snake. So we're going to feed the smooth snake a frozen lizard. Now the lizard has been frozen for over six months in the deep freezer, so this means that it's killed off any parasites. And although this smooth snake has fed rodents the majority of the time, it's good on sort of a neural level to break up the diversity of the prey, but also on a physiological level, lizards provide different nutrient profiles than rodents.
So one of the things that we've ensured at the facility is top class biosecurity protocol. And part of that is getting an ecologically certified newt fence fitting, which you can see here. And this was fit, fitted by Brindle and Green, who are contractors in Cheshire. And again, brilliant people, and they did us a great job. And over here, you can see that we've actually got this massive sort of pond, which is going to be for frogs. And we're going to put some more ecologically certified newt fencing all the way around to ensure that the frogs can't get out, but also makes sure, make things harder to get in as well. I think with that as well we're going to be building it so that it creates a bit of a fenland habitat with lots of reeds and, and rushes and all sorts of different things so it should look really cool. But the thing that's most exciting that we're going to be bringing to you in the next couple of episodes is the big Lacerta greenhouse and basically what that is is going to be a sort of six meter long enclosure dedicated just for the lizards here at Celtic. And all these lizards, well, the European species, so I'm talking green lizards, sand lizards, which are native, and also eyed lizards, and that's, that, you know, they will love this sort of climate that a greenhouse can replicate. All Mediterranean, and all able to live outside in the UK. So this is one of our uh, uh, can I get wacky off mates, here? Harry. Um, and he's giving us some uh, help just digging out um, this enclosure. So basically what's happened with the enclosure is the liner has ripped and um, we need to take out the soil and put a new liner in. And on top of that we're going to put a pond in this one because we need another aquatic habitat. So yeah, Harry's going to crack on with that. Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. <laughs> got audio on this. So it's just a bit of bit of hard graft to get the soil out um, and then annoyingly the soil has got to come back into the enclosure. I said there'd be no hard graft and then to you really I said. Yeah no hard graft. No manual labour today guys. No hard manual labour. So this is the turtle pond and we dug this ages ago and it's practically done now. We've got the sandy bank in as you can see and then we added the subsoil from digging in the pond back into the pond. And um, we've basically been planting it over the past sort of six months. And um, as you can see, there's been a variety of different plants in. We've got two different types of yellow flag iris, both normal variety and a variegated variety. We've got two clumps of common reed and we've also got Dutch reed, which is an ancient prehistoric plant. Um, we've got um, a plant over there that I've completely forgotten the name. We've got marsh marigold, and um, we've got lots of different subaquatic vegetation. And I cannot wait for the warmer weather to really start to rock it off the planting. It's going to look really cool. But the turtles have also been enjoying the warmer weather too, and they've actually been getting quite jiggy. So we're going to go to them now. So we're just going to be putting this pond liner in all across the enclosure and then we'll fill it up with soil and then dig a little pond and that'll be nice for some pool frogs. Right now I've just been adapting one of our previous enclosures for lizards into a more amphibian and frog friendly enclosure um, simply because we're expecting to get more pool frogs and more frogs than we originally um, anticipated and it's always important to have spare enclosures and plenty of space and room to alternate different species uh, because sometimes you can have too much competition between species and you don't really know um, what animals work with other animals until you try so um, we're obviously testing and trying all the time different new ways of cohabbing and seeing how things go and when things don't go to plan you always need that backup enclosure to put other animals in and just see how things go so I think that's a little tip that I've got for you guys is just whether you have a collection of 10 even up to 100 animals 
you need to make sure that you've got spare room, spare space to put different animals in um, as you need to. So that's just a little tip for you guys. So one of the things that we do here at Kelt is try and match the natural habitat of some of the species that we keep with their enclosures. So that means that trying to match the plants, species, different species of plants that you can see in the wild around where these animals live and actually take them into the enclosure just to replicate as much of a natural environment as possible. So here we've got different types of heathers. We've got the Erica heathers and we've got Kaluna, two different types of heathers essentially. And they're very hardy, you know, they can withstand the British climate. They're all native to Europe. So they do really well in this quite unpredictable climate here in Britain. And they suit a lot of your ground species, so your terrestrial species, so your common lizards, your wall lizards, your green toads, you know, all those different species that do primarily live on the ground. We've also got some grapevines here, and these are perfect for your more arboreal species like your tree frogs. So it's really just about mix and matching and trying to find the plant species that work best for the animals. So this is where the uh, Lacerta greenhouse is going to go. And just to give you a bit of detail with the greenhouse, it's 20 foot by 12 foot. And each um, side is going to be split into uh, five different enclosures going down. And there's obviously going to be one in the middle there and then another five there. So all in all, 11 four by four foot enclosures, which is going to provide lots of space for lots of different species. The thing about Lacertas is, it's nice to control your pairs and your trios. So what these individual smaller enclosures, as opposed to the bigger outdoor ones, will allow will mean that uh, we can control which male goes with which female, which females go with which other females, and so on and so on, which is especially true of species like wall lizards and things like that. Uh, but also green lizards because you can't keep multiple males together whereas the common lizards you kind of can and, so, and you can kind of get away with it with sand lizards with green lizards it's not a good idea but we've got a lot of building to do before we get to there Yeah, that'll be what we're gonna do. Um, so yeah, but anyway, all good. So the main base of the greenhouse is now going. So we've got two Escalapians here, we've got a nice big female that came from Chris Howard, uh, <laughs> Howard and I'm like, Howie. that came from Chris Howard, so shout out to Chris, lovely man, um, and uh, he's passed on his quite old adults now to us, and uh, two of them, a melanistic male and a normal female went into that other aviary. But now we're releasing this female, and then from Father Exotics, 
we've got a young Croatian male, Escalapian snake, and this one's actually a striped morph, which are not common at all, so it's beautiful. Hopefully he broods, he's a bit small, but um, if he doesn't, we can put the female in with the other enclosure and hope that uh, the uh, melanistic male will uh, service her. So, so yeah, as you can see, beautiful. Um, so yeah, let's let's release them. It's worth mentioning that they, they've um, come from the garage. So they've been in the garage over winter. There's adequate spaces for them to hide. So although it's not amazing weather and it's not no by no means the summer yet, um, it, it'll be fine for them. So let's put them in. So as you can see, nice big enclosures that we've got for them. Lots of climbing space. It's not 100% done yet. There's still more planting to do. And still some more branches to go in but other than that we're pretty much good to go look at that beautiful thing i mean they are just so stunning absolutely stunning snakes beautiful patterning on them See the male Escalapians just saying hello to me now and something that's incredibly important crucial to keeping outside is to always make sure that your enclosures are top-notch and fully secure look we're lucky enough to have a bar barrier fence that goes all the way around which will help prevent escapes but on top of that it's regular checking especially when you have things like wind and storm and, and things that could potentially damage them so we actually have a rotor whereby we check enclosures uh, basically by the book every so often and I'm just making one repair to this part of the, the wire and if you actually look at the snake here now he's even testing the mesh to try and get out so it just shows you how uh, you know these animals will try and escape and we can't let that happen the amazing thing about snakes is just like how quite almost therapeutic they are you don't really know that they're even there you know in the habitat yeah, they're so inconspicuous, like you could almost step into their enclosure and not have an idea that they're even amongst you. I think that's testament to the fears that people have of snakes in the wild. And honestly, you, you hardly ever see them and, and they are always more scared of you than you should be of them. Definitely. They're so mechanical, so beautiful. Absolutely. Why don't we turn that interest into love for these animals? <laughs> 